Lunch Money Lambert, Jeff Malott. Welcome to the Kaizen Nation. Where we talk about fishing and competition. It's your boy Ox Pippin, aka Ox Fishing. Don't come over here tripping. Hey, hope you enjoy the show. Jeff Malat, Lunch Money Lambert, <laughs> Lego. Hey, welcome to the Kite Fast Nation. Welcome to the Kite Fast Nation. Kite Fast Nation. Welcome to the Kai Bass Nation. Welcome to the Kai Bass Nation. Welcome to the Hey. Welcome to the Welcome to the Kai Bass Nation. Yo, what's up? What's up, Ryan? I Let's got that thing on loop. Run it one more time. I don't know what the hell's going on. It's 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 been a long day. I've been talking we all day long. Classically late, uh, per usual. Uh, but yeah. we're here. We're here. We're here, man. Hey, this show's gonna be a good one. It's it's special because I, I have fun with all our shows, most of most of them anyway. But whenever we're having guests on that are like our buddies, like we know them, it makes it when they've done well in the tournament, it makes it a little more special, wouldn't you say? Do you have a buddy coming on? Yeah, man. I like Joe and, and Abby. They're great, they're great dudes. <laughs> Oh, I love yeah, it. Man. Love it. Yeah, they both, uh, they rocked it down there. Abby is just rolling back into PA, uh, so he'll be popping in in a minute. Joe had the long drive, probably an hour, hour and a half back to his house. We got him in the green room, uh, so we'll be pulling him in as well. And they went one and two this weekend in the BOS series. Yeah, so Logan Martin, the big spots, a couple big largemouths showed up. Abby kind of put the hammer down from the get-go and just stayed on them. Didn't he was on them, mostly largemouth. He was on, yeah. he was on them big-headed fish. Yeah, and everybody's familiar with Joe. He kind of burst on the scene a couple of years ago with the Possum King down there at Possum Kingdom, and he's yeah. he's been around ever since, causing trouble. And he got to record some people falling out of kayaks this week instead of him falling out. Joe has been Joe's been in the right place at the wrong time uh, a couple times. He got to watch me uh, attempt to paddle uh, backward in the in the wind on Murray, and then he provided us with some fantastic content of Jordan Welliver. Uh, sinking his kayak. Glad, glad Jordan's okay. I read his write up about it. Sounded like he got stuck on a rogue piece of rebar uh, in like 15 feet of water and and sank sank the old Hobie pretty quick. If I understand right, Logan Martin was was chugging along pretty well. There's some current moving through there. We had a lot of rain, so most of these river systems, the uh, floodgates are open. There's there's a, a pretty good bit of current out there. Right, right. Well, glad he was all right. I don't know what the water temp was over there, but I bet it was not fun. It's not warm yet. It's, I mean, it's low 50s up here, so definitely still in the danger zone when you get out of, in the wind and rain. They didn't have great weather this weekend anyway. Yeah, I don't know if everyone watching has been in 50-degree wa water, but it is cold, cold, cold. I mean, it's it is. It's different when it's your feet in 50-degree yeah. water versus your entire body, I feel like. Right. So glad he's all right. Yeah, that was fun to follow along, man. I, I actually like Logan Martin. I've been there once, came to that original Bassmaster event there. It's a cool lake, those long, long spots with the perfect kayak long, tails that are like this long where you can reach mm -hmm. out an extra three inches. So uh, sad I missed that one, but it's in the books, man. It's in the books. Abby, Abby took it home. You know, Abby, everybody knows Abby for being the, the great singer that he is and also a world-class booker of Airbnbs, right? That's his <laughs> gift. <laughs> Yeah, uh, he booked our Murray house, and I was like 10 or 12 feet up, uh, some sort of, of very narrow climbing blocks is what they decided to use instead of a ladder or stairs or anything. It was pretty clutch. I don't know how he found that one. I feel like it took some some searching. It looked like a hostel out of Europe or something. It, it was, Well, Dylan and I were just on two twin-size mattresses about a foot and a half apart from each other, so we really <laughs> got, to, got to bond there at night. That's good. That's good stuff. Uh, if you guys see the banner I just put up, we're doing a cigar giveaway tonight. We love doing the giveaways to, to hook you guys up. He, the show's fun because of the people watching. Ryan and I like to like to you know talk smack on here, but cutting up with the comments makes this show fun. So we like to give stuff away to you guys. And tonight is cigar. 
uh, see Garland giveaway. So yeah. like and share on Facebook, like, comment everywhere else, and we'll get that given away to you later on. Uh, as always, if you're watching on Rumble or Instagram or something, we can't get your comments. So if you're seeing us, jump over to one of the other ones, Twitch, Twitter, Twitch. YouTube, Facebook, and we got you. We got you yes. covered there. But yeah, see our giveaway tonight. Um, there was something you wanted me to show, Ryan. There was a picture you wanted me to show. The classics coming up. Yes. You want to get that pulled up? And one of our former kayak angling hammers, Joseph Sanderson, is now he's working for Yeti and they are letting him do some cool stuff. And one of the things that they're letting him do, uh, they got some Texas country out there. Uh, they've they've procured this fantastic venue and uh, they're having a Yeti party. So if you're going to be at the Classic, slide on out March 22nd and check that out. What day of the week is that? That's a great question, Jeff. Um, you find out. I'm not a <laughs> calendarologist by any means. So <laughs> I don't <laughs> It's on a Friday. How All about right. that? Friday night. Yeti party. Turn up. Yes. Uh, and I have, if you do want to go, text me. I have a code. I have a code for some tickets. Hey, send me a code, Ryan. I, you know, this okay. is close to my house, so I can go to that. Ah, I know. It's not close to mine, so I'm, I'm debating on if, uh, if I'm going to get there. <laughs> but Coming in town, maybe, maybe not. We, maybe. We on the fence? I don't know. We'll see, man. That's a, that's a long way to go to, to donate my time to a couple booths and head back home. I feel you. I feel you. I'll, I'll probably drive over Friday, at least Friday. Now, maybe definitely Friday. Hang out Saturday, visit, you know, shake hands, get babies or do whatever. And we have out. Russell Johnson tuned in. Russell Johnson. I remember that guy. He used to cook us fantastic food dishes when he would come visit. Yeah. So what's up with jo you know, Joseph Sanderson, for those that haven't followed the sport for a long time, he was basically one of the – if he is in the event, he was up there. You know, he, he was kind of running buddies with Guillermo. He was up there top 10 no matter where he fished and he, he just would doesn't like fish kayaks? fly in like the night before a tournament and borrow rods and kayaks <laughs> and then just go cash checks wherever he landed uh he i guess he's busy man he's he's working you know some i think i think you see a lot of this stuff go in phases especially for the working folks like you, you know you go real hard on the kayak trail and then you kind of pull back a little bit and uh you know take in some fresh air and maybe do a little bit of real life yeah I, I uh, learned something about one of the other hammers of the sport by listening to Jordan's Road Dog podcast. I had no idea that Cody Milton was like becoming a professional pickleballer, and that's why we haven't like seen him out. Legitimately, yeah, yeah, like legit professional. Yeah, uh, and I was wondering why we hadn't seen him out in the top ten anywhere, or just fishing. Period. So he's pickleballing, baby. Pickleball. That's where it's at. That's where the real money is. Pickleball. Cornhole. Pickleball. Cornhole. Cornhole. Pickleball. Yeah, there's not much money. Cornhole's real good at taking your money. But yes. they're not real good about paying people money. But I think pickleball is. Okay, I don't, I don't know about pickleball. I've, I've got a one more Achilles left before I can look into <laughs> the actual physical yeah. sports. Yeah, actually, Kane, I just bought some pickleball rackets. But we have not opened them yet. They've been laying around the house for like three months. But we got them. You will hurt yourself, Jeff. Please don't. Yeah, yes. Yeah. You're right. You are 100 percent right. Um, anything else to get to? I, I don't see Abby yet. I was saving this little treat that you shared with me before to, when for when he gets here. So I'll hold oh, on yeah. to that. Oh yeah. He said, uh, he said, give him a few minutes to get settled in and he, he'll be ready to rock, but we can pull, uh, we can go ahead and pull Joe in. I don't think we have anything. I mean, outside of the classic, obviously taking place. I don't think we have anything else on the, on the immediate horizon here. Do we? No, no, we got kind of an open week next week leading up to the, to the kayak championship over there at 10 killer. And then we'll, we'll get back into the heavy spring tournament schedule. I'm anxious to fish the first all American coming up on Lake of the Ozarks here in a few weeks myself. Yeah, uh, all American series. Be? I don't know how the attendance is going to be, but I really want to fish that format. Yeah, that that ten fish running total for two days or a day and a half, really. Uh, I think that's going to be a cool format. So I'm anxious to fish that. And it's I like it because you can make up some ground, even if you go out and fall on your face. You know, one day you still you're not out of it. Yeah, you can actually make it home in time to eat some dinner and have a decent night's sleep. So we'll we'll see how that goes. I'm anxious to get up there here in a few weeks. Uh, Speaking of Missouri, Lake of those arcs, right on Lake of those arcs are real close. Eco fishing title sponsor of the show. Want to shout them out. I just ran into the owner last week and had a little visit with one of the owners last week, Caleb down here, talked with him a little bit. Things are going good at eco. They would love to hook you up with a new boat. If you can't find the color you want, the model you want, ecofishingshop.com and they'll, they'll get it right to your door. Uh, yep. In good shape. And then Western Sun Vodka. I, we, I talked to Adam, man. I want to have him on. I want to have a couple of the sponsors on, but Adam's never been on, even though Western's been with us a long time, and kind of yeah. get him on here and have a little talk with him about 
why they're so good to the outdoor industry, especially kayak fishing. Uh, Maybe we could pull little... Duke in too. Combine yeah. that with a little Texas uh, Bass Nation. Yeah, there we go. That, that'd be good. Next week is an off week. Maybe we could maybe we could pull it off. And then uh, Pro Guide Lithium, they'll probably be at the Classic. I'm sure they'll have a booth. Yeah. They had a booth at the oh, yeah. last one. They're real close to here. They're right up the road from me in Missouri, so they'll have a booth there. Check their booth out if you're looking for new batteries uh, or the Fantastic ones. Fantastic batteries. I have yeah. ran that autopilot for three days on the same charge on that <laughs> on that Pro Guide. So there you go. I know I'm flirting with disaster, but I have to test it. Yeah, it's about to be rainy season, so you know you need to go get you some Gill gear. Get you a get you a Meridian or what's the one you're running, Ryan? I got the Meridian. Which which yeah. one are you running? Yeah, that one. That one. No. Okay. It's the yeah, Apex yeah. or something, I think. Yeah, Apex. That's right. Yeah. Apex. And it's um, got the side zip, uh, side zip entry, which I enjoy quite a bit. That's right. That's right. And then we do our Revo giveaways uh, about every three weeks. Tonight, Seagar. We did Z Man last week. I saw the prize pack showing up. Yeah, man. People's houses, Ryan. Yeah, old Ryan Harder got him out there, baby. Sent me yeah. tracking numbers too. I like that. I like Heck that. Yeah. Hey, what's up, Dwayne? I see old Mr. Tony X in the, in the yeah, comments. Yeah, we got, we got celebrities in here tonight. Fillmore, yeah, who cashed a check at Logan Martin as well, and Dwayne's in. Fillmore? Look at him, man. Old, old Michigan fan. National champs, now he's yeah. up in the top five again. He's feeling yep. riding high. Feeling right. riding high. All right, let's get uh, Papa Joe in here and see what's going let's on with him. Greetings, guys. What's up, man? What's think- up? Gotta put my Revos on so I can see. Ah. Yeah, <laughs> this man knows how to promote, right? Yeah, he does. What's up, guys? Living the dream, Joe. Living the dream. I see Blake Abbey in the comments as well. Blake uh, caught a double digit. Blake seems to stay in the news. He caught a monster. Uh, so I guess he's still got that mojo rolling down there in Florida. Yeah, my man decided to roll out and fish one tournament and then just stay on dominate mode for the, like the rest of the spring. Yeah. So love it. Keep it up, Blake. Joe, how did you stay upright uh, for for two days out there? Uh, clearly, it works out when you when you spend time on top of the water and not in the water. Yeah, I wasn't in the turtling mode. <laughs> I've got plenty of experience, and uh, I'm adding a few uh, alum to my fraternity. Yeah, I know the family continues to grow. So we're gonna we're gonna grow a little more, but hopefully everybody's safer. So we that's keep- right knit group but uh as far as staying upright uh, i didn't really get out in the open water when the winds were super super high i sort of tucked in behind uh, a protected area stayed there all day i did have to traverse the water heading back in uh on day one is when i ran into jordan welliver having his issue my partner and i were headed across the lake and I was just shooting some slow-mo video going through the waves. It was kind of cool. And all of a sudden, I hear this. <laughs> that sounds just like him. <laughs> oh, boy. And then it was like, that's someone in trouble. And so I went from being photo Joe, you know, end of day one, wasn't a bad day, could have been better. But then we go into recovery mode, figure out who's screaming for help. It was well over. It was well over. Had he already made it near the bank at that point when you when you figured out who it was and where he was? Uh, it was kind of difficult because I could hear him from 500 yards away. And so I put the old uh, 1103 on high and took off in the direction of the sound. He was, blit- he was in water about chest deep. Uh, he had been trying to make it back to the ramp, taking on water and just didn't make it. Uh, boat swamped him, flipped him, lost everything, and it was a mess. I pulled up about the time he was starting to gather up uh, some of his possessions and get it up on the bank. And I read in his write-up he had some some nice young Alabama children that were very, uh, very helpful to not only him, but getting him warm, dry, safe, <laughs> uh, and his boat out of the water. So that was that was good on him. It, it was amazing. Those two children, I think the boy was probably nine or ten. I mean, he ran down there was leaning over the, the, the seawall, reaching and grabbing things as Jordan was handing it up. And he got in a big fire at bed and they covered him up. But he, he stayed out there the entire time until we got the kayak out of the water. Uh, he was awesome. 
We need to find out who that kid is. We need to get him a boat or something. I think that would be a great idea. Is this uh, is this the heroes right here? These guys? Yes. Look at that girl, man. She's all business. Yeah, she, she ain't <laughs> she, playing, boy. She is all business. <laughs> she said, hurry up and get this Yankee off my dock. That's awesome. Yeah, that's cool. I'm so glad Jordan. Jordan's, you know, he's one of the funniest dudes and, and just a good dude in general. He's been on the show before. I'm just glad he was okay. But what a story, man. Those kids will probably, that story will grow for them. When they're like 18, they'll be talking about how they swam out 100 yards. and him in. <laughs> Lassoed him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Jordan. Uh, I had to talk to him a little bit about his uh, northern uh, adjective he was throwing up. <laughs> we, uh, in the South, we say you got small children around. That, that's the kind of zip it. I'm sure he had a lot of adrenaline going through him <laughs> at that point. My glasses are fogging up, so I need to... there we go. Uh, yeah, I got, that, you, I got to share this one too. This was hilarious that you took the time to take this selfie with him back there, the yard sale on. The- <laughs> <laughs> Joe always finds an appropriate uh, moment for a selfie. I've gotten several uh, with his life jacket inflated, <laughs> giving the thumbs down after <laughs> after recovering himself. Yeah, that was the was that the Susky? Yeah, that was the Susky. That was Susky. You were on that Lynx, buddy. <laughs> Lynx. Husky and moving water at, at McKee Falls is not the place for Joe. Yeah, we learned some lessons that day. <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna get into the fish and talk here in a minute. Ryan, it looks like our our next the guest champ. has arrived. The champ bring, is here. You want to bring him in? I gotta I gotta show this first I, by I Ryan's request. We have request. a special treat. We have a special treat. Yeah. So hang on just a moment. <laughs> it's worth it. I promise. Oh Christ! <laughs> <laughs> so before Abby was a professional fisherman, uh, this was his career. That's young Abby getting down, yes, sir. Baby. I love it. Yeah, still you wears the same man. size T-shirt today. <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> Welcome, Abby, and congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks for not I mean, I knew, I, Somehow I knew that was coming. <laughs> you didn't know what the surprise was going to be, but you no, knew there I, would be I, one. I knew there was going to be at least three to choose from. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. How does it feel to get that monkey off your back, Abby? I know you've you've uh, cash checks. You've been on the cusp, you know, of, of pulling this thing off. But to finally, finally get it done, how does it feel? I mean – pretty good i literally first of all i just literally walked in the door uh i've been driving all all damn day uh i got in an accident i I didn't get in an accident but i was sitting in traffic for two and a half hours on 77 so uh uh, excuse me if i'm like a little bit discombobulated but uh no it feels great uh you know the whole the whole thing with um i've been in that like you said i've been in that range like probably eight or 10 times striking distance in order to, to take the win and being in the top 10 going into day two and never could make it happen. I mean, everybody knows these, these wins are far and few in between. And when it's your day, it's your day. And everybody knows that, you know, every, every it takes a lot for two days to come together. And, uh, and luckily it, it, it came together and um, I'm, I'm very thankful for it. And you were you were on them pretty good on that first day. And Joe, you know, we had Joe. It was in the mix uh, after day one. And Trey Leach again. You know, Trey has has been making some noise uh, this this tournament season. But you know, you had some people that that especially after your one day total that that probably could have you know made a move on you on day two. But that lake and and that you know average size of the fish. It's not one of these you know, 24, 25 inch large mouth lakes that you really have to worry about those showing up. But still, like if you got people within six or seven inches going into day two, you know, that's that's very doable, especially, you know, if you lose one key fish or something off the board. Yeah. Uh, you know, on month or on the first day, I fished fairly, I'm pretty clean, actually. 
um, which that was probably a, one of the first times for me. Um, you know, everybody knows when you're fishing around docks, a lot of times you get handcuffed when you're fishing a jackhammer. Uh, they'll hit it like right at the boat. So you're either getting handcuffed or you can't get the rod to set the hook because of the docks there or vice versa. And uh, I, I, I was fortunate enough to fish clean on, on day one. On day two, I fished clean all but uh, at 1.30 after I hit 185. I left those docks in that bay to Jody. Uh, Jody Queen and I fished all week together and um, literally side by side. And we had found that, uh, let's go back to practice on, on Wednesday. We had found this bay uh, back in the creek that the water was literally, the docks I caught some of those, those three big fish on on day two, I couldn't even get to. You couldn't even get within 75 yards of because there was only 10, 10 12 inches of water. Wow. And um, so when all that rain came and they were speculating the lake was going to rise two and a half to three feet, Jody and I talked about it and said, you know, if, that, if that's the case, then we need to go check at bay because all those docks are going to be in play. And um, sure enough, there was three, three, three and a half feet on most of those docks um in the back where we couldn't get to and do you feel uh, like those fish were back there the whole time like when you were pre-fishing you think they were kind of kind of trapped there by the man water there, there was there was a ton of bait back there uh just those little shine whatever they were thread fins i don't know what they were but they were about two and a half three inches and um there was just big balls and flicking ev everywhere and there wasn't there wasn't bass popping on them but um i figured if the bait was there the fish were there somewhere yeah there th i mean it was four foot across the board throughout there wasn't anything deeper four foot back there and um all we did is skip box and if they were in the morning they were on boat ramps and if they weren't on the boat ramps they were under the dock but on day two i, I had a little panic attack <laughs> Uh, I watched Jody catch, we were fishing this point and, um, you know, during the week there was uh, rocks, it was exposed cause the lake was down and come on day, day two, that was covered because it came up another foot on day two. And so there was a current scene there and we, we were sitting there fishing, uh, first thing in the morning there. And he, he plucked three fish right out of there, right in front. I mean, we were 10 feet apart and throw the same thing we were throwing a shaky head and um i was like i can't do this <laughs> and, and you know me i'm a net fisherman <laughs> i just said i i can't i can't sit here and do this i had to put the i never put the jackhammer down on day one and i left there and went on day one i called uh with a 17 inch fish with three minutes ago in day one i went back to that bay solely to that little dock that i found that 17 on I had missed another fish before I caught that 17 and it felt like a pretty good fish. And as soon as I got back here, second cast, I caught 19 and a half. So I got the monkey off my back with a, with a pretty good fish on, on day two. And then I went and fished the dock that I'd, I'd never fished during practice or anything. Uh, I went and fished another dock and caught a 16 inch spot that was like three pounds. It was pretty big. And, um, and for about two, it was about two hours. I, I didn't. Ha I didn't catch a fish, and then uh, Jody come through, and we went back to these to the bay. And on day one, that that bay was sixty eight degrees back there. That's what and I was going to ask. What was the temperature difference between it, the main it, lake and that bay that y'all found? Uh, like sixty, and then sixty eight back in the right on the channel swing. It was right where the main channel swing was on the on the creek. It was uh, it was sixty degrees. And then when we got back towards the middle of the, it, it climbed like instantly 65, 66, 67. And then um, I look at Jody and I, and, and I even, I think I told you this on the phone, there wasn't a bass, there was 150 bass boat tournament on day one and not one boat came back there all day. It blew my mind because it's such an obvious place. Pro know? neighbor posted a video on 
on the nation earlier of, I guess, a bass boater was trying to cut off some kayakers going to a point and beached his bass boat trying to get back there. That's awesome. And got stuck. So take that, yeah. suckers. Uh, you know, it, we did luck out. Nobody came back here. Um, you know, and Jody and I were, like I said, we were, we were fishing and he would, we were throwing exactly the same thing. Jackhammer with a, with a fire prop, uh, chatter spike on them. He had a chatter spike on out of razor shad and I lucked out and was catching some bigger fish. And the first thing on day one, I actually caught an 18 and a 19, uh, spot on, on this Island in a foot of water. I just was parallel in the bank and I just tossed out and caught, caught one, uh, put it on the board, got a picture of it, sent it in, took on the second cast after that, I caught another one. And, um, so I thought we ran into a school, but that was the only one Jody did pluck. He did, he did catch one or two fish out of, out of that area. Well, and then, um, then we went back to that bay and we finished the pretty much the day back there. And, um, you know, we thought we had a good game plan for day two and, but we had to wait for that sun to come up and yeah. <laughs> that was the, cause it was cold on day two. It was like 40 degrees. And, um, but fortunately the water was still 57, 58 back there, uh, which was a little bit surprising to me. And, you know, I'm uh, oh, sorry. I was gonna say, we talked to Joe about, uh, catching and finding humans but we didn't before you came on with us but we didn't really talk to him about what he figured out in practice or what he did on day one so before we get into abby's day two why don't we have joe why don't yeah. you tell us a little bit about what you found in practice and what you were doing on day one to see how it compared to what abby was doing because for a second it looked like you were going to run them down i know abby was sweating a little bit on day two there and uh, we thought you were going to run them down and get that w so practice of course uh, a little more challenging wind rain and conditions didn't really play uh, into my favor initially my plan was to go up to the dam and fish uh, a canal that came in uh, perfect staging area this time of year uh, they started uh, with three generators i felt okay with that but then when they opened the floodgates it just basically eliminated that play for me so i went to fish some history uh, i used to fish the alabama bash trail and springtime is always a pretty good Experience for me on Logan Martin. I had two that I started uh, to check out. Uh, the very first one I went to, I found fish. Uh, I had 91 inches on day on my last day of practice. I shouldn't have been in, in there sticking them, but it was too fun. And I'd had a collar on me all freaking year, not catching fish, and I just wanted to see what it felt like. So I. <laughs> <laughs> I was very fortunate. Those fish were loading in the area that I was fishing. It was protected from the wind. I had a seawall, rip route, and nobody, absolutely nobody came in there. Bass boats couldn't get there. And kayakers didn't know it existed. I'd see them go by and I'd duck down behind the dock. <laughs> so uh, I didn't want to invite any uh, friends in, but uh, in any event, you know, a lot of, a lot of, those fish were coming up uh, to spawn, and it was just a rotation. I, I covered about a 400-yard stretch of this seawall and rip route back and forth most of the day. Uh, the fish were just wide open on day one. I caught six fish on six casts, uh, throwing to the same corner on the dock. It piled <laughs> in there. There was a there was a, a crappie fisherman on the on the boat dock right beside me and he was going i ain't never seen anything like this so i said I, neither have i and, <laughs> so i i was i was pulling them out uh, measuring taking pictures throwing them in and back it off and getting another go at it and literally call six back to back um and i stayed in there the, the bite in the morning was insane and by nine o'clock i wanted to leave but i didn't want to leave the area because i didn't want to leave fish open for someone else uh, to slide in there. So I fished the rest of the day um, on the fringe of the, of the primary spots. And uh, there were a lot of fish there. Um, the wind uh, on the outside of that 
area was was whipping and um, it made it real challenging to try to stay on some of the points that I had caught fish in uh, during practice. Probably, what were you uh, What were you throwing? I mean, generally speaking, were you were you catching them on moving baits? Were you shaky heading? What What were you doing? Well, you know, I went in there uh, with the intent to try, uh, but when I started catching them on a crankbait, I never put it down. I caught ninety five percent of my fish on a, a square bill, and I just throw it out, get it to the bottom, and just kick it on the bottom, and they couldn't stand it. Fox and the large mouths were in there, and had a couple of bubble gum kind of large mouths that had ripped, looked like they'd been stretched out about an inch and a half. Um, but but those fish that they were in there for a reason, and they just kept loading. Um, and I and I know I was I wasn't really following the leaderboard that much. I just knew that I was having a pretty good run at it. Uh, I keep up with how much I catch throughout throughout the day, and I felt. I felt 90 inches a day was the was the minimum target I needed to hit. And I was a little short on day one. Uh, I lost a 19 and a half off the board. I got it in position, stretched his tail to get him on the half. And he lay there for me to get my camera ready, calm as he could be. And before I could even think, he was in the water. <laughs> so that was a rookie mistake because I always put a net there. I did not have my net. Um, I know, I know you mentioned something about the bass boat that got beat. I just want to say this. That I've been, this has been on my heart and mind for a long time. Some of these boaters are so inconsiderate that they'll run in on top of some of us kayakers, and uh, it, it, it's frustrating. Uh, one of my fishing partners was fishing a couple hundred yards from me, had a boat come in fishing that tournament that Abby mentioned. And she caught a fish and was measuring it and got blown off of her spot. Well, the next thing that happened was that boat moved in on top of her, throwing where she was fishing. And there was a few choice words back and forth. I won't go into the details right now, but they left. But uh, we have to do something. I think her idea was putting your video camera on and making TikTok famous, I think we're going to have to have some governance on ourselves because we're not going to get it from the government. Uh, we're, we're just getting to the point where a lot of these people don't don't care about our our sport. They're in tournaments also. So we'll just have to do something. And I think I think making them famous will curb that a little bit. <laughs> yeah. It's, a, it's always been an issue, but I can see as the water gets more crowded, it, it becomes more and more of an issue. Uh, and, and I know boaters do it to other boaters, but it seems way easier to roll up in on another kayak, right? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And and I think they, they look at us as just, you know, look, look at, I'm not saying they're looking down at us, but they don't think we're on the same level with their uh, $500, uh, you know, winning purse. If they, if they <laughs> I mean, we're out there fishing for money and, 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 and fame, like, uh, but, uh, it's sad. I mean, I think we have to do something as a group, uh, like, you know, fishing docks and dock owners, you know, raising pain about that, but on the water, it gets more dangerous. And, uh, I think if we get into this, it's going to become more of an issue and temper supply. I think there was an issue at Ufala maybe last year or the year before happened and there was a aspirin at the ground so yeah oh yeah <laughs> yeah old phoenix boy got clapped up with that haymaker from the other side of you yeah, we, we just need more jeremy hughes around that's all we need <laughs> this will all be cleaned up right quick on it. oh yeah so abby uh, we talked i texted you after day one told you to win the thing you had some nerves going into day two in first place what was that pressure like and did you feel like <laughs> It was going to work out before it started or were you like oh shit here we go <laughs> yeah we talk about that i mean it's a catch-22 like being in the lead going into day two because you're thankful you're going you're in the lead but you're also it's like it's more stress than anything because now you start questioning okay are my fish going to reload there or do i have enough fish for tomorrow am i on the right fish for tomorrow um 
Jody had Jody and Tim Isaacs had talked me off the ledge a couple times. <laughs> but they were my housemates this this week uh, this week, and uh, you know I I just went out and fished basically. I, I got I got a little bit sideways there in the morning until I caught that nineteen and a half. So I caught that sixteen. And, you know I had about a two hour dry spell, and then we went back into that bay, and there was like four docks that were pretty hot the day before. And I think it was like around 10 30, something like that. Uh, we were back there and we didn't get a bite on any of those docks. And I was like, eh, maybe it's, you know, there was a hill there and the sun wasn't completely up over the hill yet. And um, I said, you know, probably around 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock is when that sun gets above, maybe it'll push those fish underneath. Because I, I see on the live scope, I can see fish out in the middle, like roaming. And um, so I said, maybe it'll push those fish up under the docks when the sun comes up and I left Jody. It was like, um, probably 11. I, I went up about eight docks, six, eight docks, something like that and gave him those docks and I moved up and I went to, towards the back and I think it was the second or third dock I was on. I skipped way up under and, um, and all of a sudden, like my my jackhammer just went like this. It just you could feel it. They weren't grabbing it; they were nosing it, like how they when they go to kill, basically they stun a fish, a bluegill, whatever. They get they knock it, and I felt my jackhammer move to the side, and so I brought it back in. I hurry up and threw it back in, and I I got maybe one turn, one and a half turn, and it ate it, and it was a twenty three quarter. That's when I knew I had that feeling, you know. Okay, I did the right thing, and I had a heck of a time getting in because I'm. It it was so big that it pulled me. You know, it was it was probably a six six and a half pound fish. It pulled me into the dock, and I'm trying to now. I'm trying to fight the rod to get it get in the net and everything. And I had a cluster going on. The late there's a lady sitting up on. She's cheering me on, and in the, in the same time, I'm like trying to ignore her. And uh, so finally I, I got it in and uh, I I had that feeling then. And then I slipped after I got it major and everything and settled down. I slipped around the other side of the docks. It was a pretty wide dock. And there was a ton of poles on these docks. Every dock had probably, I bet you 20 poles on it. So I really spent some time picking apart each dock. And one thing I noticed, if you didn't throw to that pole that set of poles that that fish was on you weren't getting bit and so i made sure I, I ran past every every set of poles and um i slept around the other side and the same thing happened i got another another like felt it felt it go again i threw it in again same thing and i was like man that can't be that fish and third time i i skipped it clean cleaned it back again and I got about halfway out and it ate it. And it was a 17 three quarter. And um, so I caught two fish off that dock. So fished another dock, um, nothing there. And I, I went across uh, probably about 100 yards. There was an old ratty looking boathouse with a sitting in the middle. Like it came out like uh, 50 feet off the bank. And there was probably 20, 25 poles on this dock. So I go over there and I skip down. There's lanes going down and I skipped into the second lane after I went through the first one. And I missed this fish three times. <laughs> I don't, he didn't hit it. He was, they were just nosing it. Like they were trying to kill it. And um, so before I threw the fourth time, I was like, well, you know what? I'm going to go around the other side. And there was lanes going the width of the dock too. So I threw it right down the middle where I thought I missed that fish and it ate it. And it was, it was another giant. It was 19 and a half. And that's when I hit 185 and took a deep I took breath. About, took a big I, deep breath. I, yeah, I took a deep breath. I, you know, I wanted to think that I had it, but I, there's just that doubt that somebody's either holding fish or, you know, I didn't, I didn't look at the leaderboard. I wasn't trying to look at the leaderboard all day. Um, so 
I didn't know where Trey was because Trey was right on my heels there. And Tim, even Tim Isaac, he was right behind me. And Joe was there too. And um, so then when I did submit that second fish, I saw Joe was, was uh, I had just moved ahead of Joe to 179. And he had 175. And I think Joe called again to 177. And then that's when I caught that, that other fish, the, the 19 and a half, the last one, it took me to 185 and a half, whatever. And that was a, that was just a big fat fish too, a big fat female. And I think I sat there for about three minutes and had a little talk with God. <laughs> and um, man, it was just like a weight was lifted off my shoulders. I didn't feel that I still want it. And um, it, there's always that, that thought in the back, back of your head, you know. And um, so I got my stuff and I went over and and Jody didn't know what happened. So I said, well, I just, I just took the lead. And he goes, what? And the, cause the last time he saw me, I had two fish. And uh, I said, I literally just caught three giants on, on those four docks back there uh, or on two docks back there. And um, so I said, I'm going to leave here and you can have the rest of this, you know, I, I'll get out of your way. You can, Vicious. I said, I don't think anybody's gonna, gonna catch me. I, I don't know, but and he looked at the lead where he's like, Oh my, he said, You're you're fine. So he goes, We were talking, and we had talked about this on day one after day one. He was throwing a chatter spike, I was throwing a razor shad on the back of my jackhammer. And he goes, Man, what are you doing different? And I said, Jody, you, I fished beside you. See what I'm doing? Like we're we're both skipping the same length of the dock, everything. And he goes, I said, the only difference is I'm, I still have that razor shad on. You have that chatter spike. So I gave him the razor shad and, um, I, it was my last razor shad. Actually, I gave it to him and I think he called <laughs> when he came back out when I saw him at the ramp, he got a 19 and a 16 and a half and yeah, wow. up to ninth place. So subtle. Difference. I don't know if that was it, but that was literally the only thing that was different between us what we were doing same color same everything other than no those trailers how do you guys yeah. ma i mean a lot of people would be complete i don't like fishing around people i think ryan you've mentioned it before too you don't like fishing around people much less fishing around a guy like jody queen who you know's going to clean up every fish you, you think is going to clean up every fish around you joe abby either one of you how do you guys manage when you do have to fish around or choose to fish around other people how do you manage that mentally well personally it doesn't bother me. Typically, if I'm fishing around someone else, they're going to be using a different bait or maybe approaching it just a little differently. Um, I don't mind fishing behind people. I just feel like the fish can tell the difference between the way my rhythm and my cast is, the way I shake my rod or whatever it is. I think that there's a difference, a subtle difference. And, and I've seen it in the pros as well as in kayak fishing. Uh, it doesn't... It, I don't think it's a big deal. Um, so it, it doesn't really bother me that much. I, getting around Jody Queen or now Abby, uh, I might be a little more nervous, but, but as far as that goes, it doesn't, it doesn't really doesn't affect me. It, psychologically, that's the biggest thing. I'm uh, going in. So Jody and I had already planned on fishing together throughout the week, and we found every, everything we found, we found together. Um, so we basically never left each other. We stayed within a hundred yards of each other. Uh, we were talking throughout practice and everything and, you know, saying, Hey, you take this, this, I'll check here. And, um, Jody and I fished, especially after fishing the whole week with him, we fished a lot alike. Um, you know, he, he can finesse when he has to, and I am a finesse fisherman, but as of late, when I'm down south, I, I instantly become a power fisherman. Uh, I learned the hard way my first year. I can't sit with a net all day. And yes, it will catch fish. They do catch big fish. But the guys who are power fishing covering water are the guys who are going to catch bigger fish and more fish. So I've learned to become patient. I know I'm going to get five good bites if I have that jackhammer in my dick in my hand all day especially now 
you know, and going in the spring in that pre-spawn. They, the bites were just so aggressive. They were just – I caught a uh, – in practice, I caught a five – a little over a five-pound spot. It literally ripped the rod out of my hand because I was looking the opposite way to see where I was going to cast next. And I was I was only about ten feet from the from the kayak, and this thing literally just ripped it. Thank God the rod went down into the into my kayak because it literally just ripped it right out of my hands. And, it happened uh, to me before, but I lost the fish. It was Ryan's fault. Though. I was on the phone with him. Of course, it had to be my fault. We can't <laughs> oh, be on the yeah. phone anymore, Jeff. We just got to sit up there and I'd have caught him. The rules share our thoughts. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Joe, going into day two, you know, you knew you had your work cut out for you. Were you pretty confident that that area was going to reload and maintain those fish after what you had seen on day one? And were there any weather changes or anything going from day one to day two? I, the biggest thing with the weather, the wind was blowing as hard outside of the area I was fishing um, early in the morning. Those fish uh, just were gravitating to the back of those pockets, and it really – reloading uh, pretty much the, the entire time. Now, when the sun got straight up overhead, uh, which was rare for the most part in this tournament, uh, they would they would move out of that pocket and I'd have to get right up against the docks and or skip under the docks uh, to get bit. And it's a, it's, it's a challenge in some of those tight, tight areas like that. But as far as the weather, uh, it, it really wasn't a, a affecting uh, what I was doing back there. And yes, I, I saw, I had a lot of work to, to do to get uh, in position to do well. Uh, Paul seemed to be leapfrogging me back and forth on day two. Abby was back there, but now I know why. He, he had two fish. It was, I could only imagine what his thoughts were at that point, because I've been there all year, Abby. I, I mean, I've got tournaments, I didn't catch a fish. Uh, three tournaments this year and good late. Uh, yeah. it, it's humbling. So, you know, I came into this tournament with the intent to just relax and fish and not worry about, you know, what I'm catching or not. You know, just focus on trying to do as best I can. And, and like Abby said as well, that when it's your time, it's going to happen. And we've all been there, or some of us have been there and got gotten close. Uh, but Abby, congratulations to you, buddy. Uh, Thank great, you. I appreciate it. Great way to fight, especially after you're, you're combing waters with uh, with Jody. I, I, I admire it even more now. <laughs> well, i tell you what was funny on day one. Uh, I had Jody had fished these docks on the right of this bay. And there was probably like two or three, maybe four docks on that side. Um, and then he, I had already started on the, on the left side. Um, going into the bay, that's just the side we were on, and he went that way, and I went this side. And I had already caught an 18 and a quarter off a boat ramp that was right beside the dock, and then I went around, I caught a 13 and a half, and then I caught a, I think it was 19 and a half or something like that, 19 and a quarter. Uh, I think it was 19 and a half, um, large mouth, and He's going behind me with a shaky head on the same docks I just fished. And he's he's catch he caught a couple of fish, so I wasn't picking apart docks at that part at that point. I was literally thrown to the obvious. You know, I throw to the back first, and then maybe to the middle, and then to the end. And most of them were on the end. Um, they were either on the end or they were in between the seawall or, or the bank and the in the first set. Of, you know, uh, with that water pushed in, it, it raised that water up to two feet back there. So they were, they were back there, and uh, they weren't, they weren't spawning. Uh, you know, a lot of guys asked me if they were spawning. No, they you know, when when that when that uh, to me when that jackhammer bite is so aggressive, they're cleaning out that area. They don't want any bluegill. They don't want anything in that area when they're getting ready to make a bed. So what they do, they go in this phase for like a couple of days before they start spawning. Where they're, and that's when I, I was talking about they're stunning the fish. They come in and they just ram them, and they'll eat them. They'll they'll knock them out and then eat them. And uh, I watched a documentary about it not too long ago, about spawning and what they do. And that's what they do. They're cleaning out the area to get to get it ready to make the bed. And um, so that's why that 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 jackhammer is so deadly during this time, especially like your reds and uh, everything. 
we every jackhammer we threw and we only threw one basically one color and it had a red a red trailer on it uh they they were just destroying that with that red on it i had threw multiples during i did catch a few on chartreuse and white with a pearl um razor shad on it but and i i i was thrown an evo uh with the orange blade and a and a regular jackhammer with the black blade with fire craw uh they were eating that too i did on day one i did catch two on on that on the evo and um so it had to be red for for us that's the color was producing the most that, that was and, one of the uh, questions I had saved, and you just answered it, so that's good. You saved me asking you the question. Appreciate thank it. Thank you, <laughs> Joe. And, were you uh, seeing that on your on your pattern as well? Was it a, a really color specific thing? Were you on the same red pattern? I guess. No, actually, uh, I was not, and I had I had jackhammers tied on in my rod holders. Never picked them up when when the fish started hitting the crankbait, the moving bait. I just worked it. I just I, I stuck with that. There was a few times when it slowed down. I went for a period of time and didn't catch a fish. That I was just a wacky rig sinko up under the docks uh, and caught some fish that way. But it, but uh, you know, I didn't feel that was going to get me the bigger fish, which ended up being true. Uh, I lost uh, an eight pounder yesterday. It just, I couldn't get it in the net, and it just finally just pulled off. But I was, you know, I don't mind telling you, I was throwing Little John, Spro Little John, and Root Beer, which is basically, you know, a light colored bait. And I think with the color of the water, they could see it coming through there and, and ambush it coming out front of those docks. Um, when it collected off of something down there that, that made an erratic movement, they were on it. And it was, it, it was, it was kind of like uh, Possum Kingdom. Ryan, it was. <laughs> I remember that place. <laughs> you know, you just mentioned that, Joe. Whenever you say crankbaits, treble hook baits, whatever, you're always risking losing fish. How many did you lose? You just said you lost a giant. Did you did you lose any more that would have really helped you? Only fish that came unbuttoned. Really? Those hooks were so sticky. Uh, I mean, that's the only one that, 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 and I think I probably tried to lift it out of the water uh, and put too much slack in my line and he just my my net wasn't big. why i didn't take a big net on this tournament i don't know but i typically carry a large net uh, for that reason uh but i think it just in the like abby said that 23 plus he had on i mean the thing is when they when, when they got you right up against a dock and they're fighting going under your kayak you've got your mirage drive down there you got everything in the world that can go wrong you want to get them up there and in the net as quick as you can and then i just pushed it too hard too fast abby if i'd had that fish buddy uh -oh. be a different <laughs> <part>. <laughs> roles would be reversed here oh but i for you buddy it ain't it, <laughs> the winning is not that important to me it's the experience being around guys like y'all is, you know, this sport's growing. You know, we go ourselves and, and support each other very well. And that's what that's what makes me stick to kayak fishing versus big boats. Uh, it's a great family. And I, I'm very fortunate at my age to be able to participate with you guys. I got a question for you real quick, Joe. What's in the crown bag? <laughs> <laughs> crown. <Okay. laughs> so, so, so we talked to, I, I mentioned to you earlier a little something about Hoffman Kingdom. I, there is a special bait that I keep in that, that what was in that uh, bag was Crown Royal. At one time. <laughs> but that I keep what I call my juice. Oh, yeah. When, you, when you're reaching in your bag, you know, you got that all, you know, everybody does it. You know, you've got all these bags of plastics. When I see that bag, I know it's, I don't have to look. I just reach back and feel, right? feel for that velvet. Feel that baby. velvet, baby. Yeah, rub that, rub that velvet. You're giving him a juice rocket. Oh, whoa! <laughs> whoa. <laughs> Hold on, hold on. Trademark. 
<laughs> what other questions do we have Jeff, <laughs> while we get all the way off the rails? Here? That's my fault. I just had to know what was in there. Uh, I had to know what was in there. Uh, I wanted to ask Abby. I, I was looking at his pictures as well. He didn't have a crown bag, but on some of the pictures, sniper pull down, some sniper pull up. Did, did that play at all? I know you said you were looking at him out in the, in the deeper water, but did it yeah, play at all so up under the docks? I, um, there, when I was fishing tight into the docks, I, what I would do, I would, I'd pull in between two docks where I could fish both sides. I would pull my, my sniper pull up because I didn't want that pinging going on, uh, from the, from the live scope. So I don't know if it had to play in it or not, but you know, the last three fish I caught the big fish, I didn't have it down. So, um, I did use it a lot on day one. It, you know, it, it does. And that sniper pole is great because it saves a lot of time because you, you're not moving your whole arm. You're just literally turning your handle. And I was scoping the dock beforehand and you could see fish under, but the one thing about that place is there's kind of crappie. So they're not, they're not small, they're big. And, um, so you had to distinguish whether they were bass or, or, or crappie, but, um, you know, I, I used my live scope a lot on day one. Day two, uh, it was, I used a lot out in the river channel. And then when we came back into bay, I pulled up when I, when I power pulled down in between two docks. And um, I would just, you know, being the water was so shallow, uh, three feet, I would just pull it up and, and, um, and that's what I love about that. So that, you saw that sniper pole sitting up on that mount. That's a new mount that Sniper has coming out. And it'll be available in three weeks. So uh, that's actually Jordan and I have the first models. Well, actually, Ryan, I think you have one too. No, no, I just tested it and then they gave it to you. So <laughs> thanks, Sniper. It seems to make a heck of a uh, board mount too. Just lay your board right on that thing. It's um, actually not touching the. I don't think it's. Touching oh, it's not. The, no, I think it's actually hitting my kayak first. Oh, okay. Uh, if I if I can remember right, it's an illusion. Uh, yeah, I'm not can sure. You put, I, can you put at this point, I can't remember. Inside. That was all. That was all. That was all a haze. You know. Uh, can you put what, it what down would... inside the hull of the native and see if there's any fish in there? <laughs> <laughs> Scope around in there. <laughs> hey, I will say this: <laughs> on uh, my my new tight necks, all good. All right. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Sorry, man. We had to do it. it. I love it. So we have real questions, uh, Abby. Uh, what rod well, do you like for your ride. jackhammer? Oh, shit. I didn't have to paddle my kayak back. Oh. Hey, hey. all right, all right. <laughs> I like it. Abby, what rod do you like for your jackhammer? Uh, definitely the cash and uh, chattergrass, without a doubt. Right. Uh, chattergrass sounds, sounds yep. usable. The chattergrass rod is – and Jody – actually, Jody and Corey uh, Dreyer designed that rod. And oh, boy. It's awesome. All Automatic right, for... load up. You know, when you're when you're using it, you know, you don't have to set the hook on it. It loads up automatically. What? Is it AI? Yeah, it is. Yeah, it's got an AI feature in it. USB, USB reportable. Uh, recharging. It's got a winch on it. <laughs> um, Joe, how long have you been kayak fishing, and what's the best tip you can give to a first-year kayak tournament angler? I started uh, kayak fishing in 19 after attending the Bassmaster Classic in Knoxville. And... <laughs> I was running around chasing Jordan Lee, thinking he was going to three-peat. And I wanted to record it uh, in pictures and video for him and his family. But I noticed these guys fishing kayaks. And I thought, man, I need to do that. I need something for exercise. And so as, as soon as I was leaving Knoxville, I started looking for a Hobie dealer. And I found one in Gunnersville, Alabama. Made a few calls, went there, bought my first kayak. I now own 11 Hobies. So, I was going to say, and how many do you have now? <laughs> two. But uh, uh, it, it's good to have good inventory because I can always supply one for friends or parts. I always carry four or more Mirage drives with me just in case someone needs it. Uh, Dylan had to borrow a seat as well uh, on our most recent trip to Murray. So, um, so Bless these kids. I, I know. <laughs> Uncle Joe, take care of them. 
Amen, brother. Amen. So it's all good. Uh, and, you know, Hobie's has is, is been a good, a good product for me. And um, I know there's a lot of others out there, but I'm just going to stick with the Hobies right now. All right. One more for Abby. Do you still write music? I do. Uh, I haven't a whole lot lately, but uh, I've written uh, a couple songs in the last year. Abby, I got a sneak peek at the Road Dog and theme song. Oh, you did? Yeah. Have you heard yeah. that one, Ryan? I haven't. I don't uh, think I yeah. have. Yeah, it's not the not the official version, just a kind of a mock up version. Jordan uh, shared it with me. That's pretty awesome. It's gonna be good. Yeah, I'll give you a little sneak. It's just, it's just uh, on the road again by Willie Nelson, but I I changed a few lyrics in it to fit Jordan's show. But uh, I'm going. To, I'm actually going into the studio in two weeks to to lay it down. There yeah, you go. that's awesome. So it'd be professionally done. Yeah. Abby, are you using an XI three or a stern mount? And then we've hit all our. I, I have an XI3, but I, I, I use my Torquedo. That's, you know, um, if I'm on Erie, um, which I, you know, you and I always talk about small efficient, but um, when I'm on Erie on big water, I'll use the, the bow mount for spot lock. For most tournaments, it just makes, if you have a pedal drive, it just makes sense to use a stern mount to get where you're going and then use the pedals to adjust, right? I don't ever use pedals. You don't? Ever. So you Why? got a stern. What do you what do you do to adjust between those docks? You just paddling? The remote. <laughs> what? Yeah, but if you're running if you're running your stern mount, what do you do to to I don't ever dock fish with that. It, I, it's too much. I I just use I just use my torpedo. Ninety percent of the time I'm using my torpedo. The only time I'm using my spot lock is if I'm on a deep lake. Um, where I'm so fishing. if you're running the torpedo, you're using pedals too, right? No, I'm using my foot steering and power pulling down. So you just get in between the docks, power pull down, and cast. Sheesh. Correct. This guy. Uh, this guy. Out. Do you even bring the pedals with you? No. Really? You just no. scrape motorboating out there. Who yeah. else was doing that with their Hobie, Ryan? Somebody we had on just here recently had, they just left their drive at home. Is uh, that the, Mr. Wyatt? On Tennessee Bass Nation. Yeah. Remember, he's bringing the plug. That's right. You bring the plug. That's We're right. going night fishing on Del Hollow. <laughs> that's right. That's right. I, I don't like I don't like using the pedals because they get in the way. You know, um, you know, being that you know, Hobie has fins, so they, they don't the pedals don't go back and forth like mine will circle around if I'm using my motor. They'll they'll start going around by themselves because it's a prop drive. Right. You know, because you're pushing water against it. So <laughs> I mean, Joe, I, um, are, are you going to slide out there and fish the uh, kayak championship? Yes, sir. Leaving on Friday. You going to win it? I'm not going to say I'm going to win it. I'm <laughs> going to uh, show up. All right. I mean, participation counts. You got yeah. It helps help build the pot. You know, if you get some of it, that's great. Are you going to be at the Yeti party on Friday night after the thing? I, I, uh, I, I actually took my day timer. And I could put a note in here to reach out to lunch money for my. Yeah. Uh, so, yes, I will be there and I cannot wait. Good. Oh boy. I, mean, I, bring, I might bring my young lady over there and, and uh, introduce her to yours, Joe, if that's all right. Y'all y'all are the best. But that'll be fun. A little Yeti party. That sounds good. Yeah. Most tournament. So. It could be a celebratory moment. It could be. It could be. Hopefully so. I hope hope some of our boys get up there and make some racket. Yeah, I hope so too, buddy. I really do. I've got a house full of uh, characters, Jordan, Dylan, uh, Nick Dyer, and uh, we, we renamed our house. It's the Top 10 Killer House. <laughs> Well, take care of uh, take care of Marshall and Dylan uh, out there, please. Just give Nick some yingling and sit him in a corner. More, him more so, Dylan. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Jordan's running a tight second there. I can tell you that. So yeah, <laughs> don't 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 Not look a, over Jordan. Yeah. Nick, right. Nick's Nick's like just like you said. He's going to show up. He's going to fish his butt off during practice. He's going to fish his butt off. During He's going to come in and knock back about eight or 10 yinglings, get ready for the next day. Yep. 
I love it. Well, boys, we're going to wrap this thing up and uh, get on down the road. Joe, congrats on second. And, you know, thank you. You've, you've had such an impact on this kayak fishing community since you've been in it. Obviously, you, you know, helped spark the, the Save JT movement that's now rolled over into multiple charity tournaments and, you know, fundraisers that we've been involved with. Abby, it's always great sharing a house with you. Uh, we have so many stories that nobody will ever get to hear. Uh <laughs> thankfully it's funny because <laughs> I, I i i hear from other all right people, abby's out of here see y'all <laughs> <laughs> i got you back with the with the mountain climbing <laughs> oh you did you won on that one well gentlemen congrats we're gonna let you slide out of here get some rest since you just got home especially abby um hopefully uh, i'm sure we'll see you again on the show this year good luck with your season we'll let you slide out of here thanks guys thanks, see you fellas appreciate it there we go two good ones right there <laughs> Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Two of my favorites for sure. Yeah. So now we got to do the cigar giveaway. I had yep. to come up. Everybody's been trying to jump the, jump the line on the code. So I came up with my own, my own code tonight. Uh -oh. you come Any up guesses? With? Any guesses, Ryan? What do you think it is? I, I, <laughs> I, I don't know. I hope it's something to do with Mr. Right now, but I don't know. Yes. Ding, 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 ding. yes! So we're doing we're doing the giveaway tonight to get in on it. Hashtag Mr. Right now. If you didn't watch the beginning of when Abby came in, you need to go back and watch that. Yes. You need to go to YouTube, Mr. Right now, poverty neck hillbillies and enjoy. The comments were killing me earlier. It was, uh, Abby <laughs> Aldean, Abby <laughs> Keith coming in. Oh boy. That was awesome. Here they go. The hashtags are flying We make in. Abby bring his guitar and play for us sometimes just to put us to sleep. <laughs> I'm pulling for a Twitch winner tonight, Ryan. We haven't had one yet. I, I wonder if what what's the algorithm you think? Juice Rocket. <laughs> <laughs> the Velvet Ooh. Juice Rocket. Yeah. Uh, well, it's just there's only like there's two on Twitch tonight, whereas we have like a hundred on Facebook and YouTube combined. So it's just the odds are in their favor. Yeah. Odds are in their favor. Top shelf fishing. Yes, yeah, sir. He's over there on the over there on the Twitch. We got two oh, Twitchers instead of one now, so we're, we're riding high. I know. That's crazy. We've doubled our Twitch viewership, I think, is the best way to phrase that. Hey, we're, we're rolling pretty good over on Twitter tonight. Excuse me, X. Really? It's like there's 14 live viewers on X right now, so appreciate wow. y'all over there on X. We're creeping towards 1,000 followers on uh, over there on Twitter. That's crazy. I try to keep that popping. I thought I was going to get us in trouble the other day because I was kind of trolling Ronnie Moore from Bass a little bit on his uh, <laughs> Twitter. Wow. I can't wait to get blamed for that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, Twitter or X. I keep calling it Twitter. It's forever Twitter. It's a fun place. I know it'll, it'll always remain Twitter. I think. Hey, top shelf fishing said he pushed us out to some servers on discord too. Appreciate I don't even you. know what that means. Hey, we have a discord too, man. We have a what kayak best nation discord. Can somebody tell me what any of this is. Yeah. I forget about it and don't use it much, but we have one. What we is do it? have one. It's basically another place to talk besides uh, Communeland that is Facebook. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. Uh, and you can also talk via audio, not just words back and forth. You can use audio. Really? Yeah. Okay. I think that's how that works. All right. Correct me I'll if I'm wrong, Top Shelf. Uh, let, let's see. We got a fair amount of people in drawing. Let's go ahead and hit this thing. What do you say? Let's do it. Let's do it. I'm going to take a nap tonight. That's what I'm, gonna do. That's what I'm saying. Tick, 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 tick. Discord is AOL for Gen Z. Okay. <laughs> Jim Baird. Hey, oh, Gen Z. All let's right. Go. Yeah. All right. There we go. Oh, Top Chef says you can do video on Twi on uh, Discord as well. I didn't know that. Oh, so, hell. hell, we've been missing out. I know. We'll get it figured out. Don't worry. We're old. Yeah. Jim, hit us up. Get your send, cigar. Send us that info, man. I'll get it over to Brian, and he will get you some line heading your way. That was fun, man. I, there's no big tournaments this weekend. I don't have anything like to be looking for on our schedule, so we need to throw something together for next Monday. But we'll, we'll put something fun together, to yeah, maybe preview like bass or something. I like it. All right, man. All right, take it easy. I'm gonna pack up and hit the road. Go balls. Go balls. <laughs> Later. <laughs>